John, Michael, we're here. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah, you, yeah. Look, you look good. Bulldog, there's your little um, T-shirt. I think it's cool. What's the emblem on it? Yeah, it's it's a triangle yeah. with a, a bulldog wearing a, a suit, right? So it kind of <laughs> represents that we're fierce, but civilized, you know. Uh, <laughs> and then the triangle is like three pillars, right? So it's like the, it's what, the mindset. Well, the triangle is the three pillars. So the mindset is the bulldog mindset, yeah. which is the key in the center. But then it's basically the health, wealth, and relationships side of it. So yeah, yeah. And this, and you're 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 invested in the relationship aspect of life. I can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that comes from probably the relationship to yourself as you might have changed throughout life or what you did to uh, accommodate changes or organize changing or recognize the need to change, the value of change. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what it comes out of. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah I went through a lot of transformations in, in my yeah. life. Yeah, you know, what does that mean, transformation to you? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think it's, you know... I view it as discovering who you really are, like letting letting go of the things that you know you, you're holding on to. That you know, it, it's you know, I've always thought about it. It's, it's like what you desire to become is what you actually are, and there's just all the stuff in the way that you have to get rid of. So to me, a transformation's a shedding, a shedding of, of things that you don't need. Yeah. So also like an opening to the vision of possibilities. Yeah. Which is another way to look at it. It's a little bit more of a philosophical way, but the vision of possibilities. Yeah, every human being has much greater possibility than they, they're expressing when they're restricted by their individual perspective. Mm -hmm. The one that they're adopting generally, uh, or premise. Premise and perspective is the way the mind operates on the it's it operates on the basis of some perspective or premise and often those perspectives and premises are totally erroneous right when they're put up against the vision of possibilities right yeah right. because the premise and perspective already is a limiting aspect of the way the mind can organize itself to represent a view of itself right so yeah so try why a triangle again Oh, because of the three? Yeah, because of the three, yeah, yeah. So that was, what were the three? Health? Uh, the health, wealth. Relationship, and health, relationship. wealth. Yeah. What does wealth, in your view, yeah. mean? <laughs> I mean, it's, I think of it in terms of like true wealth is money that you don't have to keep on earning, right? Is to have more than you need, right? right? And yeah. you know, as the Stokes would say is, the answer to becoming wealthy is not to get more, but to need less. And so I think really... Yeah, Stoics. Yes. I remember we had a conversation. You like Stoicism. Yeah. Yeah, interesting philosophical position. It's interesting. For me, wealth means high self-esteem. Hmm. Okay. Why is yeah. that? Because if your self-esteem is high, right, then you're not at risk. So you're wealthy. You're very yeah. prosperous. Right. A billionaire can go into a marketplace mm -hmm. and he's got the bank there. So he's not pre-involved or he can shop and look around and buy anything right? because he's got all this money in the bank. It's the same thing with self-esteem. If it's so high mm -hmm. and you're a billionaire with your own self-esteem, you're not at risk for anything on the outside not, not, not at risk for the outside changing that value, right. but also you can spend your individuality mm -hmm. very freely right. without any apprehension about having to shift or change anything. I so you have, So when I think of wealth, I look at it in terms of self-esteem. And I look at it in culturally, for example, when we look at different cultures within cultures and we see people that say could express are an expression of repression a slave for example sure, or okay. an offspring of a slave is probably generally going to be to some degree have a premise or perspective mm -hmm. that 
generally going to hold his self-esteem into a very low value. Right. The only way to have them become wealthy is not to look like or try to achieve or have things that he senses the people that have a lot, <laughs> uh, the way they have a lot of things or people and places and can spend money. Right. And oftentimes people that are repressed utilize the perspective of that. And then they try to accumulate things to look like oh, the right. people exactly. who are free. Yeah. And in essence, the freedom of life is high self-esteem. For, that's wealth for me, okay. personally. Okay. That being said, yeah. there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a lot of money that frees you up right. to look at you know, life's opportunities or possibilities with uh, the sense of freedom of right. being involved in the marketplace. But a billionaire, is, a spiritual billionaire, is one whose self-esteem is incredibly high. And that comes largely from contacting these underlying aspects of potential that have not been drawn up to the surface mm, okay. or hidden. They're like hidden gems, hidden splendor. Oftentimes you'll hear a word like that. So that's wealth, but I understand your, your wealth as it's used in your bulldog mindset. And that has a, definitely has a value. But I think if one only has wealth in terms of things, right. money, people, places, and things, then the, the, that doesn't necessarily, it changes what you can do. Right. It gives you opportunity to navigate the physical world differently, but it doesn't necessarily change who you are on the deepest level. Right. And that's a, yeah. that's a problem for, um, especially in the Western hemisphere where production and consumption are the ways that we govern Right. how things are going along <laughs> because uh, those are those are both, both opportunistic production and consumption but the high self-esteem you know comes you know makes life super fluid because you're not at risk for anything at that point right in terms of perspective or premise right whether you have a lot of money or whether you don't you're free right yeah. and sometimes the wealth actually, makes you have something to lose and then yep. you, you have less freedom. <laughs> it, That's why a spiritual you. billionaire right. is a way to describe someone who's right, you know, um, not at risk right. for being in the world, in the marketplace, the world in right. any way. Yeah, because you, different relative aspects of that person's experience can change, you know. Uh, they can be, have an injury, they can be sick. Uh, lots of that, those kind of things can happen, but the self-esteem when it's high is not at risk. Yeah. Even if health or even if a relationship has to change. Yeah. And then most oftentimes people that self-esteem is high, when they have to make changes, they're not dramatic and they don't have these major, well, the major conflict residue. Right. Because if you're not, if you don't have high self-esteem and a relationship is changing, divorce or whatever it is, any kind of relationship is changing, work relationship, athletic change relationship, then the changing values don't shift a person so dramatically that they mm, create a residue or a deposit in the atmosphere of stress and tension and anxiety and pressure. Yeah. And yeah. That's looting the freedom of wealth. Yeah, I see a, a, a big connection in what you're saying in identity, right? Because if your identity is attached to something that is changing or you have attachments instead of a true self-identity, then yeah, changing roles is disruptive. It causes chaos in your life because mm -hmm. now you have to form a new identity. Yeah. And uh, But yeah, maybe there's a big connection between having the right identity the true identity and self-esteem being high. Yeah, I think, and that's the, everyone has that opportunity. It's within, it's, it's a natural byproduct of a, a kind of an evolution, mm. a, sp a spiritual evolution, although that's a word that gets freaking, it's a goofy thing that yeah. people are using all, all the time. But spiritual evolution is, you know, high self-esteem is probably one of the very first 
expressions of uh, spiritual evolution. Uh, it's, you wouldn't go announce that when your self-esteem is high. <laughs> right. <laughs> Guess where I am now on the scale, you know, Jesus, I'm a 10. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, but at some point in a natural way, the evolution is that you, that you become, in a certain kind of terminology, actually, I love the word invincible. Yeah. Because if you use invincible in terms yeah. of, you know, the Roman Empire of invincibility, right. that's not the invincibility I'm talking about. It's the invincibility of not shifting with big changes. A right. tree with really, really deep roots yeah. cannot be blown over even by the strongest wind. You know, yeah. you might have some fruit drop off or something like that. Right. No big but it's freaking not. deal. You'll grow that yeah. back. But um, so it's, it's, it's that kind of identity where there's a whole other range of self that people, I think even in the 21st century, with an enormous amount of the new, new age stuff. Yeah. They miss the fact that the, the, the self that is being talked about by seers and sages and wise people throughout history is the universal aspect of the self, not the individual aspect. Right. People deal mostly when they talk about self with the, in, their individual stories having to change to get better at or improved from, right. you know, and this self-esteem aspect that I'm talking about is the opposite of that kind of warrior mentality where you have to improve, have to get better, have to get perfect. Right. Uh, it's, uh, it's freedom from that actually, or the contingency of those kinds of functions with regard to individual self being recognized as, you know, something that is, um, uh, you could say, uh, not perfected, but growing or developed. It's this other aspect of self that's missing in most people's um, expression. Okay, yeah. There's a hell of a lot of individuality going on yeah. in the 21st century. Yeah. And the, the, the uh, I'd say the, um, the attachment to it is very strongly individual self. Right. Know, I have the right to, <laughs> that kind of self. Of right. course you have the right to. But the more you put on yourself, <laughs> whether it's markings, tattoos, and art, I, yeah, I can see it's art, but it's still attached to the individual and claiming I have the right to be as individual as I want to be. Right. And there sits the universal self that is free from having that need. It doesn't right. mean you don't function that way. Right. It's just that's just... not contingent. Right, because you, if you're having to prove it, you're having to express it. It's because now you're bound by it. Yeah, yeah. There's the attachment yeah. part, and I think there's a good connection too between that and actually the Stoic philosophy. Because I, I like to use the word invincible, because that's what I tell people all the time that Stoic philosophy makes you is invincible. This idea, because a lot of the Stoics, I think a lot of the Stoic philosophy is very similar to what we would call it, like an Eastern philosophy or, or Buddhism and the idea that you need to not be influenced or your internal state needs to not, not be dependent on the external. And it's like we have all these attachments to the external. And so, like you said, when something comes along and a storm blows and it, it knocks most people's trees completely over, but when they're rooted in themselves and they don't allow the external to influence the internal because they realize they're in control of that, then they are invincible because nothing can hurt them. Yeah, I think the thing, you know, the nomenclature is good, but it's, at some point what really happens, mm. even in the Stoicism and even the word philosophy, I would, I would say this, I think most philosophers were actual experiencers mm -hmm. and what happened during philosophy is the announcement or the conversation sure. then became less about becoming that and right. more about saying he was like that. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that philosophy, yeah. actually, I don't know where, it's, it's probably Greek, mm -hmm. uh, and the Greeks, of course, were pioneers in the world of exploding, I would say, understanding, sure, yeah. understandings, but... Um, I sense in my own direct experience that 
philosophy has has come about and is recognized as as uh, something that's I would say romanticized, mm-hmm. worshipped. Uh, but if I looked at say Socrates or Aristotle, I don't know much about them, but I can guarantee that anyone that writes what they wrote like that was an experiencer. Sure. Yeah. So if you stop being the experiencer and just be a kind of a worshiper, right? Then, then you're then you're no longer it's no longer actual. It becomes becomes conceptual. Right. Right, yeah, exactly. So instead of it being spontaneous, a spontaneous reflection of uncovering something, yeah. it becomes more of a control where you control the, the perspective that you had on what they say. And then you sort of try to be a mimicker of that yeah. as opposed to it just being an uncovering of a potential that everyone has. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a fascinating thing, but stoicism... And the Eastern thing too is, is in my view, is largely misunderstood, and it has become more of a whisper down the alley. Or a, uh, that's the name that we used to give as when I was a kid. Right. We said whisper down the alley. Let's go play whisper down the alley. I think it's called telephone game. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we used to call it whisper down the alley. I have no freaking idea why I call it that. I asked my sister one day. Huh. I said, why did we call it whisper down the alley? Yeah. Everyone knows it is the telephone game. So I have no idea where that came from, but whisper down the alley is the same thing. Yeah. Where you start with one phrase, pass it on until it comes back to you and it's totally distorted. Yeah. Because it's not actual, it's conceptual. Yeah. If it's whispered. Exactly. Eastern, so you use Buddhism and that's, you know, very similar. I think there's a lot of misinterpretation of sayings and philosophical renderings. For example, I'll give you an example about philosophy, Descartes writes, I think, therefore I am. Right. That's not accurate. Right. In my view, not in my view, in my direct experience. Right. It's I am, therefore I think. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. (laughs) You can't think unless you am. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it makes sense, Yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, and so there's a lot in that, in that philosophical world that stops people when they only read and then make their interpretation right. based on their limited potential. Most of those philosophers that we call philosophers were direct experiences of, of some state or condition. Exactly. And that state itself put together the words that they used. Exactly. Yeah, I think a lot of it is our models, which all models are imperfect, but they're pointing at what is the actual nature of reality but again, no model can describe it. And then when you look at the model, the person, as you say, the experiencer, that's just the approximation they're trying to communicate. And and I think that some people can look at the model and like you said, worship the model (laughs) and think the model is the thing. Whereas it's the understanding that you might gain from that model that doesn't just belong to that school of philosophy or that that way of thinking, but is a universal truth that belongs to everyone. And it's just a, a, a point that's, yeah. you know, pointing you in that path so you can see it. But, yeah. and that's where I think so many people, again, even it's with stoic philosophy, people constantly misunderstand and they think it means you don't have emotions. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's really a fundamental truth that it's pointing at. Uh, but you could arrive at that same truth through a variety of different, you know, Models, I would say. So yeah, but I think the models are just different. But the truth is not right. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I yeah. think the philosophers, you know, they're all different names, but they had the same direct experience of mm-hmm. the universal field, yeah, which spoke out the individual way to describe the universal. Yeah, I agree. because they're all it's all one big universal principle. Right. They just look different. Different cultures, different languages. Yeah. I mean, even all the all. Uh, and I, did, I venture into that world of religion, which is a wacky world in my view, but all, all religions are just different descriptions of the same one experience that the different characters are in the main, the, the, the characters in the main story of the religion. 
those characters had one direct, ex one same direct experience. Right. They yeah. called it different things. Exactly. And, and then, once you get the consciousness of the reader that's limited versus the wakefulness, expanded wakefulness of the, of, of the character, the character is actually describing in each case the evolution that took place in their lives from a limited consciousness to a universal consciousness. Right, right. And once the reader whispered down the alley telephone game, yeah. here's it from their own level of consciousness, right. then it's distorted. Exactly. Yeah, and you end up with worship or buildings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and corporations and organizations <laughs> that yeah. have you know, that have a perspective right. that's limited and then they get a crowd <laughs> yeah. called their congregation or whatever and they feed them the limited understanding and then we're pretty well up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree, yeah. And, which is the problem. With, so the main character yeah. had the experience right? and then the telephone game took over. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that, yeah. I think. And then I, the, the, the words become powerful to the people or the person as opposed to the concept which was trying to be conveyed. It, yeah. And it becomes religious. Now you can't yeah. touch it. Now you can't disagree yeah. with it. Now you can't. Well, it becomes yeah. a belief system. Yeah. It's not a knowing system. Right, right. Once it's you belief. go to belief, you're pretty well trapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's I mean, a good distinction between belief and, and knowing too, right? Because yeah. belief is something that you you have a percentage or probability of, but uh, a knowing is something that you don't have to question, right? So, yeah, I mean, and it goes all the way back to self-esteem actually yeah. in a funny way. But this the sequence that I look at in the evolution, uh, again, spiritual evolution, blah, blah, and, uh, kind of funky quack, quack stuff that people lay out in the 21st century. It's cool. But this, this, what, what, if you look at the stages, it's like there's some innocence. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, some introduction into some belief system. Sure. Then there's doubt. Mm -hmm. And once there's doubt in a belief system, the troops are going to rally quickly yeah. <laughs> to take you back to belief. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Wait yeah. a minute. Yeah. You don't want to go there, honey. Yeah. Nah, don't go to doubt. Here, we're going to show you some more stuff. Right. And the more stuff, you know, there it is, shown up in the screen of your consciousness. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. And you end up, you know, being taken away from doubt back to belief. Right. Eventually, you'll go to doubt or some resentment will happen. If you get into doubt, that's mm -hmm. a really great place to be. Right. Because the next thing is, if you get free, it's almost like breaking free from a leash. Yeah. You know, I mean, if the dog is on the leash and it breaks free, it's just gonna sprint right. and go for it. Yeah. And if you break free from doubt and you sprint, that's when you start to seek. And once you become a seeker, then the potential to be a knower grows. Mm, okay. Once, yeah. And once you're a knower, then you live the, that. You, you, that's the progression. But with religion, strongly belief, there's strongly oriented to belief. That's the way they build a consensus. Right. They build a, they build a crowd consciousness. All that happens from a whisper down the alley. Right, yeah. Or a telephone game or whatever it's called. Like, I can't get away. I still can't freaking find out where that came yeah. from. Whisper, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think Whisper that. Down the Alley is, I, I wish my mom were still here. I would call her and say, where did that come from? Yeah. I can remember being a little kid and we play that game. We call it Whisper Down the Alley. Same concept. Though. Yeah. The concept is knowledge is, is structured in consciousness. I wrote a quote in my book. It says, the knowledge in the book remains in the book unless acted upon by some outside full force. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That does, yeah. 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 I mean, when people say, for instance, uh, if you have a quote in a book and it says, the peace that passeth all understanding. Uh huh. Sure. Okay. Well, you can, depending on where you are in the, the concept oriented aspect of that phrase. Yeah. You would have a description. If you experience pure peace, right. pure peace, just right. peace, nothing else, just pure peace, yeah. then you would go, yeah, I know what the hell that means. Right, yeah, right. Because the yeah. intellect ain't there. <laughs> there is no understanding. It's a direct experience of pure peace. 
Have you ever experienced pure peace? Even as a little kid. Hmm. I'm trying to think if that's, if I would describe an experience as, as pure peace. I mean, I've definitely experienced states of where I don't have any work, where I know that everything will work out and there's no worry. And maybe that would be a state of, of pure peace. Where that's, that's a good relative description in my yeah. view, yeah. But there is a state in which you, the intellect's not operating. Right. Could you right. imagine that? Because like, we have to have right, the intellect to, and the ego operating. You know, the two little freaking evil twins. Right. You know, they love to work with each other to give you perspective and premise and establish yourself in existence so that you're okay. You know, but they're ignorant. Ignorant meaning not knowing. There's right. a place in which they don't have to operate that has more value <laughs> to right. their individual experience than these two little freaking devils that like to play around in your head. Yeah. You know, they're like criminals, those two. <laughs> they should be locked away. <laughs> but yeah, the peace that passes all understanding. Or Emerson writes a poem like he writes, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters when compared to what lies within us. Mm, yeah. And so, okay, stop. What lies within us would be the question of a seeker. Right. Right. Now right. a believer is going to say, I know what that means. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. A seeker is going to go, whoa. Well, yeah. I can't. Now someone who all of a sudden is directly experiencing like this place. Uh, Rumi writes, beyond the rightness and wrongness of things, okay. there's a field. Now Rumi is 1200, 1200, 1250 or something in the Ottoman Empire. Emerson is somewhere, I don't know, he's English or American. Yeah. 1900. Yeah. 18, 1900s. Yeah. So it's two dramatically yeah. different cultures, different yeah, times. Exactly. And they're yeah. saying the exact same thing. Right. How could they, how could they, use, and they're using relatively few words. Right. That's not like a big treatise. Right. It's not like a book. No. Yeah. <laughs> so they're talking about some state. Yeah. Same thing, the peace that passes all understanding. That's biblical. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, even prior Old Testament would be, uh, we think that we see the world as, as it is, but uh -huh. we actually see the world as we are. Uh, yeah. So if, yeah. So the, 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 again, it's kind of like a statement about there's some state or condition foundational. Buddhists would use equanimity. Yeah. 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 But I think it's, you know, what happens for all of us in existence, I find, is that we warrior up. We're trying to accommodate this goddamn thing called existence. Yeah. How are we going to make this work? Yeah. You know, it's like, it's cool, but it's sort of uncomfortable. Right. What do we have to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do we have to do to feel okay with this? Yeah. And then, then the contingencies roll in. Then everyone has a voice. Yeah. And all of the contingencies and all the voices are, are limited. Yeah. Because of, if you don't directly experience that state, yeah, you would only be lost out here in existence, which right. is a constantly changing thing. Right. That's its exactly. nature. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. its nature. You don't want to change it. You want to be able to glorify it at some point. Yeah. And you can't muscle up for that one. It's, no. I've been an athlete, as you know. Yeah. And so I know how to muscle up. Yeah, but I can see you really not a muscle. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah, I've been trying to lately to let go and just just do as opposed to doing for you know just for an uh, outcome exactly. And yeah, just, because you're not you there. Know, just show up and do the thing I'm I'm supposed to do, and then yeah, that's that's. I all mean, I, I look at the about. table. I put my hands on the table. I go, yeah. Jesus, freaking, that's wild. Yeah. To me, that's like wild. I yeah. mean, just move. I just move my hand like that. I'm going, whoa, it's pretty wild. There's something going on in the world of intelligence that's way beyond my little individuality <laughs> that is doing something. Yeah. And it's fascinating. So when we do an existence, I find that the word contingent on an outcome. Once you're contingent, yeah. then you're, you're no longer there. Yeah. You're not, you're not. Your do your your experience of the doing is gone. 
Right. right. I mean, you're going to do, but the full experience of the doing is gone. I mean, if you look at Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, he sits on some freaking bench in some park for three years. Yeah. And not, no, we're not, that's not going to be the typical way you can approach no. this evolution. No, but... But at the same time, what yeah. he did was take himself out of the daily routine. Right. And he took himself out of contingency. Yeah. What did he find? He found the moment. Yeah. And the moment is as big as the collection of moments. Yeah. It's bigger than the collection of moments. Yeah, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts kind of thing. Yeah. So wholeness or being whole is when, and being free yeah. from being a warrior trying to accommodate existence. Exactly, yeah. You become more of a sage where you glorify existence. It doesn't mean you don't want the outcome. Yeah. It yeah. just means just you're not contingent on, it. Exactly. on it for feeling okay in this freaking crazy thing we call existence. Yeah. You're free. Yeah. I could yeah, I could draw a comparison also Seneca and he he writes in his his letters in, in Stoics. Yeah. He talks about the idea that he's always encouraging like his students retire, retire and become a philosopher. And, and they're resisting and saying, Oh no, I, I got to do these things. I got to, first I got to make this money. I got to make sure I have enough money. I got to make sure. And he's like, well, why are you doing this thing that you're never going to end, get to the end of this race? There's no matter, no matter, nothing's ever made you happy before you accomplish this thing. You make this money, you get whatever it is. You're still, it's, you're, 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 you know, throwing, into a, a well that's never going to be filled. Like, stop doing that. Instead, come and do the real work, which is to look at work it on yourself. To to look at yourself. To look at to study. You know, as, as he would say, study philosophy. But really, it's the introspection of discovering the the real nature of reality is the the real thing to do. But that's the thing that doesn't have the contingency. But it's like everyone wants to say, well, at some point, once I get all this stuff handled. Then I'll do what you're saying. <laughs> then I'll stop being contingent and I'll I'll just live. But I can't right now because I got other stuff I need to take care of first. Yeah, I got to build the resume. Mm, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Here's <Yeah>. my resume. <laughs> yeah. It was filled with contingency. <laughs> yeah. But retire, he meant. And I don't know him, Seneca. Yeah. yeah. I never read it. Yeah. But I can give you my interpretation. Sure. Yeah. He says retire. Right. Retire means take the awareness away from existence. Mm, mm, yeah. So, I mean, I could make the cheap freaking segue and say meditation. But sure. that whole concept has been presented all over the place throughout cultures. Right, right. Pray, meaning move within. Right. Anything that's referencing moving within means take the awakefulness out of the sensory exposure to people, places, and things. Right. Retire. Philosophy, telling his students retire and move toward philosophy. He's talking about what if he, he's not talking about the science of philosophy as the way we look at it today. Right, exactly. Yeah. He's talking about retire from the intellect. Right. Trying to figure this freaking thing out. Right. It doesn't work on that level. Yeah. And the sooner you retire, the sooner you figure out. Right. that it doesn't work on that level. And when it works on the other level, the whole thing works. Right, exactly. Because yep. you're free from right. even the apprehension of death. Right. This is a big one, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because if I, you know, I say this and people go, ah, I don't think they buy it very easily because you can't buy it. But there's actually no such thing. Existence changes. Right. We're not, we're not going to have this material when we drop. We're going to drop, in my language, drop the body. Yeah. <laughs> but we warrior, we do everything right. to find ways to make the existence okay. Yeah. And in reality, what Seneca is saying is retire from that and come to philosophy. And philosophy is, is to, I, I guarantee if I had a conversation with me, he'd say, yep, yeah, leave the intellect out of it. Exactly, yeah. Leave the ego out of it. Yeah. I would say leave the whole apparatus out of it. Yeah. You leave the intellect, the mind, the body, the senses, the ego out of it. Right. If you can get to a place where the whole wakefulness is settled back onto its pure state, 
You get free from existence, keeping you attached and bound to outcome. You still, you absolutely love existence even more. Right, right. You're not, you're no longer fearful of it. Right, right. Most people function because they're trying to organize it to feel okay. Yeah. I mean, look at the whole, you just even look at our 20th century, 21st century. I mean, you can look at our last thousand years of right. world culture. And I can tell you that the fundamental basis of everyone's mm, conflict, yeah. individually and collectively, it's, and how they're constantly trying to overcome it yeah. by improving aspects yeah, individually and collectively right, to change. is an effort to yeah. try to feel okay with existence. Right. Yeah. And there's, it's the only way is when you realize that only a portion of you is in existence. Right. There's a whole other portion that's yeah. eternal. And you can never fully stabilize existence because it's like building a sandcastle, a perfect sandcastle on the ocean. Yeah, it's and changing. Those are relative. The wave is going to yes. come, and existence. <laughs> and so is you relative. keep on trying to organize it, and yeah. it keeps on scattering, and yeah, you yeah. keep on trying to organize yeah, it. Even then, if you look at time, yeah, if we look at time. Look at how much attention we pay to time, right? And there is no such thing. Right. Now we have to organize things, obviously, right? In a certain way, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Nothing wrong with doing. It's only when the attachment is to a contingency. Yeah. But if we look at time and space and we think that we only have so much time, we only have so much space, that's not true on right. another level. Right. That's almost Seneca saying, right. retire from yeah. that. Exactly, and from that way of from thinking. From that concept. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's not, it's, that's a concept. Right. And move toward the state. Right. Which is, I described it yeah. in different ways. And I think, it, it, you know, you can see it as it's like, if you retire from that concept, what's the destruction or what's the destructive element of that concept is that you think that these things matter when in reality they don't matter to you, who you are and your own peace. It's it's the things that you think are going to give you peace that are the things that are causing you the unpeace. And you don't need any of that. You don't need to actually accomplish or that's feel or do a yeah. thing. You just that's you what think. he's basically saying. Yeah. I mean, he used the metaphor. Yeah. I mean he spoke metaphorically. Yeah. That's you know, all metaphors have reveal and conceal the truth of the metaphor. I think the concept of death is also a, a good relevant one. It, it's it's funny too, because again, there's a lot of parallels because uh, a lot of the Stoics talk about the idea of what your your whole purpose is to prepare for a good death, <laughs> to prepare for death, and that is really what you're what you're doing here. And then once you have figured that out, then you're 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 ready. But uh, but a lot of the whole idea, if you would ask, you know, a, a Stoic probably during those times, is why study Stoicism? And they would say to prepare for death, to prepare yourself for death, which is the hardest. But thing. but do they mean? Let, let me ask you something in, the, in your sure. interpretation. Do you think they mean? death of the physical apparatus or do you think they mean death of the individual self while you're in the physical apparatus i think they mean the physical apparatus but i think the method for doing it is the second so i think what they're saying is that you have to face your own mortality but the only way to do it is to get rid of this concept of the the self that you're holding on or, to the way to get rid of mortality is mm. to directly experience immortality mm. while you're mortal. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that that's yeah. that's what there's. <laughs> then the fear of death is gone. Yes, yeah, exactly. there's no such thing. Right, right. How could there be? Let me ask you something. Mm. If we took it another way, okay, and you say, let's take you take the word death out okay. and just use the word life. Right. Now just think of a life. Okay. Yeah. What's its nature? What's its nature of, of life? Yeah, what's the nature of life? Just its nature, the nature of life. Is that it, it has its autonomy, it it's, goes on. It it's life. It. Yeah. It's living. Yeah. So how could there be something else in it? How can there be something else besides life? Yeah. In life. Life by yeah. its nature is life. Right. Once you're in it, how do you get out of that? 
by ending it? By How could you end life? Life by its nature is life. Life is life. It doesn't have anything else in it. Mm, I see what you're saying. Like Just like light, like darkness is not uh, a thing. It's an absence of, of light. Yep. That's a good one. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yep. So life, mm -hmm. death is not a thing. It's an absence of life. We, you know, right. Death is a concept. Right. That's not real. But life is the actual thing. Light, once yeah. you're in life. Death is not a thing. This is the Darkness joy. is not a thing. N no. Yeah. It's yeah. an expression of a value of light. Right. That makes that's sense. That's not very light. That's right. All. That's, yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah. You know. and, and the way to change the darkness, mm. one little ray of light right. is enough to begin this, this. I mean, if you look at the dawn right. of a day, it was nighttime. Yeah. One ray of light starts to express the changing value. Sure. Of the yeah. night. Just yeah. one ray. Right. Already indicates some things are changing now. So yeah, this thing about uh, people that are uh, knowers when they start using the word death the way you used it, I think, I don't know if it was Seneca just now or how you referenced it, um, you know, but you referenced it really, really well. But that, that whole concept is, is not valid. Unfortunately, it's been used very ignorantly too. Because sure. if you look at religion, if you look at certain religions, they brand it the contingency world. Right, exactly. Heaven yeah. and hell. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty good brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, got you, we got you now, man. Right. Fuck, we can, we can go now. Yeah. And we can control now, man. We can control existence. Absolutely. Heaven yeah. and hell. That's no different than threat of punishment, promise of reward. Right. Which is the which are the two extremes in contingency? Right, right. So you get in a pendulum of doom. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and then they sell it to you, and then they teach it to you, and then they train it on you. Right. And we're and you're you're further and further away from the ordination of life. Once you're in this freaking form, this human form, yeah, it's pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. I mean, it is really awesome. More than you can, it's more than you can imagine. I just said a lot. Yeah. It's more than even can be imagined. Right. So even if you get inspired and you go, God, it's incredible. Uh, Michael just said something that seems really inspiring. That's, you, it's more than you can even imagine. Right. So once you're in human existence and this whole apparatus has the ability to reflect the source of itself, which is pure wakefulness, life, just life. Yeah. So there's, there's only changing value. Where, what happens when you drop this aspect of your existence, the physical tuning fork for this existence, then there's, there's a whole other discussion. It gets a little too esoteric. I think I stay practical with the inner peace conversation. I just want more yeah. people have inner peace. But the evolution of inner peace, it can be ecstatic to a point where the inner peace is so great that the apprehension of this concept called death is no longer even there. Right. You don't necessarily have to know what's happening after this is dropped. But while you're here, you're free right. from the antagonism and of, that, yeah. of the individual self yeah. only being established with a concept of time, space, death, contingency. This is the way individuals, I think, get free. Right, from and knowing, right? From because they get they get free from the suffering right. of trying to consistently feel okay right. and figure it out. Right. And then everyone gets in there and you know, and it's all ig ignorance in my language means not knowing. Right. So it sounds it sounds can sound like a cruel term, but I don't mean it that way. Right. But most human beings are ignorant, it means they don't know don't know what, they don't know the full potential of their existence, right. which can, they can be free from the existence being antagonistic. And the, if you hold a belief, then you'll always be one, for example, on, on death, right? I mean, you can't overcome the fear of death through belief system because it always is going to require faith. But you said you said the word in the first two words, hold. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you hold something then right. 
You just restricted it. <laughs> but if you know, yeah, then you're free. There's no right. right. Yeah, exactly. But that takes direct experience. It's conceptual conversation for us now, and it's fun, right? Because we're we're playing around in, right. in a nice field with potential in it. But the direct experiences. This sounds crazy. When I oftentimes when I'm invited to go to different places to talk, say a yoga studio, I'll use I'll pick on yoga. <laughs> uh, yoga, I'll say, come talk to my group, and I'll go talk to them. And always the um, owner of the studio or whatever would say to me, and by the way, because they know I teach something specific. Sure. And they'll say, you don't think yours is the only way. And I, I recognize immediately what they're saying. <laughs> they're, they're basically <laughs> saying, we want the opportunity to throw a lot of different things out there because we're yeah. in production and consumption and we're gonna, we, sure. we sell products. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if you say the only way, then we can't sell anything. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> we want to sell right. differences. Right. And so yeah, yeah. I go, no, I, I don't think mine's the only way, but there's only one direct experience right. that shows you right. the way. Right. Right. That, uh, the way of freedom. Right. And that direct experience is described as transcendental or transcending, right. meaning going beyond the individual nature. Right. And right. you end up in the universal nature right. where there is no individual right. aspect. Right. It's beyond even a comprehension. So when I go into these places and I say, yours is the only way, I go, no, it's not the only way, but there's only one thing that has to happen right. in order for you to see right. the way. Right, so to speak. Yeah, there's yeah. the way of, that you're free from there being any way. <laughs> right, right. There's a lot of ways to get to Paris. You can take but a if, lot, of, but there's still only one Paris. Yeah, if you're yeah. in Paris, then yeah. there's, you're not worried about the way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, right. the way to get there doesn't matter. You're there. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You yeah. may be in to say, "Oh, I I took the what was that freaking plane they had that." Oh, the, the really super fast one? Yeah, the, the nose was down with a... Oh, yeah. The, what was that? Concord. Yeah, the Concord. Concord? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was like three hours or something. Right. New York to, yeah. You know, pretty soon it'll be 10 minutes when Elon Musk gets going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we'll really have a lot of fun. But I think uh, that Concord thing was, if, if you say there is a way to characterize the difference in the way in terms of maybe speed... Sure, it's possible that you would do it, but that even that is a little bit freaking funky. To say my way is faster to get to the same one place you need to be, but there is a place where a starting point. Yeah, that's the equanimity or the state of inner peace. Right, it's beyond. In it's beyond, you know, the the peace that lurks beyond the intellect. Yeah, beyond the mind, beyond the apparatus is functioning. Yeah, actually, you, the, in that state. People try to describe it all the time. I make a description of it from my own direct experience. It's, it's indescribable, uh -huh. it's unmistakable, mm -hmm. and it's unfathomable. Okay. So I just said it's not relative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is exactly the point. Right. Because we're only dealing in relative existence where there are changing values. That's what freaks us the fuck out. Yeah. Things are changing. We have to we have to organize things according to some systematic approach to not fall off, <laughs> to right. not drift away, to not float away. And in essence, what Seneca was it Seneca uh -huh. or yeah. the other Stoic? Oh, what, Marcus Aurelius. The... No, Aurelius is great, by the yeah. way. Yeah, and I, 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 I or, pardon? Maybe Epictetus or no? I think you were when you referenced the philosopher that said. Oh, Seneca. Retire. Yeah, that, Seneca, was Seneca. that was Seneca. Yeah. yeah, he's talking about retire the apparatus for a few minutes. Yeah. Shut it down. Yeah. Hence go within. Yeah. You know, it's no different than uh, freaking Go Thomas preaching this Buddhism stuff around the villages uh -huh. you know, of, of Tibet or wherever he is bouncing around. And he comes to the conclusion, I'm full of shit. You know, he says, I'm just quacking away the scriptural text. Right. I don't really know. Right. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I yeah. don't know what I'm talking about. Right. He knows he's talking about it, but he doesn't know what, what it, is. it is. Yeah, exactly. That's when he sits down and shuts up. Yeah. It's the same thing, retire from. Right. It means go away from the apparatus is functioning, go within, and maybe you get to see 
what really is. Right. Yeah. But I think it's, uh, you know, you know, back to back to when I go into places and the the whole contingency of protecting their menu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. their menu really means I get more people to dabble and babble. I call it dabble and babble. Yeah. And then I sell t shirts, I sell hats, and I get little right. lemon tags. So I'm <laughs> I'm in good shape now. Right. It becomes merchandising. <laughs> right. So I always run up against when up run up against that. But the you know, when I think of you know, even bulldog mindset. Yeah. I understand the value of that having played football. Mm, yeah. And baseball. Yeah. Even baseball more. Yeah. And if the guy was throwing 90, 92, I'm going, yeah. I'm, getting my, I'm, uh, I'm not going down. Right. Exactly. I'm not striking yeah. out, period. That yeah. is the way I would start. Yeah. And then finally I get to a point where not only that, this is going to be a gapper, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm driving this ball into the gap. But I, uh, so I understand that. And, and Warriors uh, is a set, it's a mindset, but it's not, it's not one that frees you. It ones that, it, it's generally one that creates contingency for achievement. Yeah, and I think the way that I look at it is that, I mean, and yeah, I, I did a video on this a, a while back and I was talking about how it's like, you know, I could, I could come here and I could tell you as a man, I could be like, look, this stuff that you want, I know you want to get laid. <laughs> I know you want to make some oh, money. I know no. you want to get jacked. <laughs> but all that stuff is not important. <laughs> you know, like, trust me, you need to be seeking after other things, right? Those are things that are really good. None of those things will fulfill you. But if I tell a guy that and tell, tell him that message, I've already lost him. Like, he's already gone. So the way I look at it is it's like, let me give you what you want or you know, so that I can give you what you need. It's like you tell if a guy's never had a girlfriend, and that's what he wants, and you try to tell him something that there's a higher purpose in life or spiritual, he's not going to listen to that ever. But you teach him how to get what he wants, and then he realizes it still doesn't fulfill him. Now he's still now he's looking, and that's where where I, I kind of see it with bulldog mindset is, yeah, a lot of the, the stuff I create content is at very base levels of like, here's how you do this. Here's how you make some money. Here's how you get to the gym and, and get muscles. Here's how you get girls and, and all those, you know, problems. But I find as I work with guys and I solve those problems for them, then they're open to hear something more. But, you know, there's some people I think that are seeking already, but my kind of, vision and what I try to do is to try to help guys improve themselves to the point where they realize that's not what they need to do. Yeah, I think it leads into a yeah. more fundamental discussion about stress mm -hmm. and strain and tension and compression. Tension and compression is like a dog on a rope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people are in that. Yeah. And so when you describe the way you approach the bulldog mindset as fundamental foundational, and yeah. you're right, you're not going to dissuade the craving aspects of what they think is going to bring them fulfillment. I mean, I spent at least two and a half decades there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I ran through a whole bunch of, <laughs> you know, experiences. Sure. Uh, luckily for me, I was meditating every day, even though I was a total freaking crazy guy. But yeah, you're right. I think it's really yeah. wise to keep it fundamental. I do too. Yeah. Inner peace. I don't go off into these extravagant. Yeah. I can, but it, right. it with an advanced group in a retreat somewhere. But in general, the general population, they just need to be declutched yeah. every now and then. I don't tell anyone to stop anything. Yeah, I don't say stop getting laid. Like right. you'd never hear that from me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. don't tell anyone to stop drinking or right. whatever they choose to do. I don't. Yeah. But I will tell them to start something that gives right. them a little bit of peace. And, and I think that those actions, one thing I, I, I talk about is this, I have this theory they called the rubber band theory, which is that when you try to stop doing something, it's like pulling a rubber band and you can use your willpower to stop for some time, but eventually the rubber band snaps and it snaps back the other way. And that's where you binge or you go the other. And it's because your actions flow from your nature. It's who you are that defines your actions. And if you're trying to attack your actions by 
stopping them or changing them, yeah. you're just always going to fail because yeah. you haven't changed your nature. But if yeah. you change your nature, actions flow from that nature. They'll flow from the new nature. And so it's like you said, you don't have to tell someone to stop drinking or stop trying to get laid all the time. If their nature changes, automatically their wants will change and their actions will change yeah. automatically. Yeah, It becomes a spontaneous expression of their expansion. Exactly. Away yeah. from the contraction. Yeah. Yeah, a tree, you know, if you... It's the thing, even in this new, new age with all the spiritual stuff, it's a lot of Band-Aid stuff. Yeah. Where, you know, the, the tree of life has got some branches broken, so let's tape them up a little bit. Yeah. Or the fruit is not the right color, let's paint that. Yeah. You know? and <laughs> right. The, and the root system's freaking just, you know, decaying. Yeah. And so, you know, it's kind of a ward of the root to enjoy the fruit, which is something I heard a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Um, by one of my favorite act teachers. But um, yeah, I think you're right to have the fundamental thing and recognize that it's not so much about people stopping anything, I do the same thing, it's about them adding or starting one fundamental thing. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. in your case, it's perspective, which is a good, a good way. In my case, it's actually sit down and shut up. I just teach yeah. meditation that's really easy to do. It's easy to learn and it's effective immediately in right. terms of stress reduction. So people feel more relaxed. And yeah. that sounds really mundane if you throw it up against words like enlightenment. But it's that mundane aspect that's missing for a large portion of the population. They're yeah. just not established in a state or a condition where the outside world can uh, cannot m m move them off a platform right for very long right yeah. yeah so this is great you know but i think uh when you look at i think bulldog is great actually <laughs> so french bulldog or english bulldog i think it's more of an english bulldog right it's the kind of yeah idea. that is kind of like you bite onto something and don't let go yeah but it, they're right? also yeah. incredibly charming yeah those yeah those English bulldogs are really charming yeah. because they're so freaking, in a funky way, hard to look at. Yeah. <laughs> but after you look at the, yeah. you can see the whole sweetness of it all. Yeah. So I think, you know, so maybe you have to change it to bulldog sweet mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's great. Yeah, you yeah. have the right idea in my view. I think it's oh, right. fundamental. Yeah. You're not, and it's no different. You know, you use men a lot, I guess you're, I don't know if your approach is toward men, but it's yeah. no different. It's just a different set of yeah. circumstances, a different set of desire packages that maybe a woman for sure has than a man has. Yeah. And, and at the same time, we don't mean, it's nice to see those differences, but what happens is I mentioned earlier is the androgyny. It's a wonderful word, wonderful word that describes a mix of the characteristics. Mm. And for one to be complete, they would have the full mix. So they have yeah. an appreciation for both simultaneously while they're engaged right. in being themselves. Yeah. And it wouldn't, we wouldn't have as much uh, uh, rancor right. and conflict yeah. over okay. establishing, these are my characteristics, those are your characteristics. Yeah. <laughs> you need to learn mine, I need to learn yours. Yeah. If you have them as part and parcel to your natural everyday feeling, thought, speech, and action, then you're a little bit more complete. Yeah, you and know, like so. we were talking about, I think it's a matter of choosing to play the roles, uh, seeing the value in that that interplay between the roles as opposed to being uh, unable to understand why you're this way and this person's this way, being forced into a role as opposed to the the, the choice, because yeah, I, think, I think there's some value in the, in the choice of of choosing to play those roles, because those things together, even though a person can be complete in themselves and having both the masculine and the feminine, uh, it's that exchange of energy that creates a synergistic effect where you have more than what one by itself could be. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, if each individual has 100%, you're in good shape. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you're expecting the 
I got 50, you got 50, we're going to make this work. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's probably going to be a difficult proposition, right. which apparently and statistically it is. Right. <laughs> so the, the, our individual glass has to be overflowing. Right. You used something earlier and used a well. Uh, yeah. And you were talking about either the well going dry. Or, or like throwing into a well that doesn't, that's a bottomless pit. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. you're well, never going to fulfill your gratifications. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the well, every, the, the well m metaphor in, in different uh, expressions throughout history and writings is really talking about a wellspring that's so overflowing all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is what we're trying to have to make ourselves, I would say, um, glorify existence yeah not be so accommodating <laughs> yeah and i think it's 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 also you know the part of it because even with relationships it's like love you can't give what you don't have and you can't truly love another person if you don't love yourself because you'll just envy them uh and thinking that it's love you know what i mean because you can't really want good for someone else unless you believe that you already have all the good yourself Otherwise, it's human nature to envy, and and we'll we'll disguise our envy by complimenting someone and and cheering for them. But in reality, in our heart, we feel that envy because we feel like we're lacking. And Once so, you only have human nature operating, we're pretty screwed. Yeah, yeah, and what you're saying is great. I mean, there's something I've said and written a long time ago. You can only give from what you have, right? And you can only receive from what you give, right? Right. Yeah. So if you've got fifty percent. Yeah. You're going to be pretty stuck. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you have to overflow, basically. Yeah. And then you can give from what you have without any apprehension. That's the billionaire in the marketplace idea. Yeah, exactly. That's the self-esteem idea right. that I was talking yeah. about. When it's high, you're not at risk for giving. Exactly. And what do you get back? Just more of the same thing you gave out. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's like a constantly replenishing right. thing. It doesn't mean that everything's perfect. There's no concept right. of perfection in relative existence. Right. But the nature of the relative is changed. So there's nothing statically the same all the time. Right. Even the laws of nature as they are on planet Earth, a million years from now, they yeah, could be different. be different. Exactly. You know, yeah. So we don't know. Yeah. But yeah. excuse me while I adjust. But right. I think, um, yeah, you can only give from what you have. Yeah. Only receive from what you give. That's always people kind of eyebrow that one. Like, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> well, and it's interesting too, because it does come into play with some of the more man mundane things. Like, for example, with dating, when I help guys with dating, it's like, you know, the nice guy, like being a nice guy. It's like, well, it's not about what you do. It's about why you're doing it, right? Because the nice guy might give a girl flowers because he's trying to get her approval and validation because he doesn't have, he's trying to get. Whereas yeah. a guy that is secure and and has already might give a girl flowers because he just wants to give an expression of, of care and he doesn't, he's not looking for anything in return, no response. And that same exact action has a different expression and different interpretation based on who you are and what you have. And so it's like you're, everyone's kind of trying to solve things by changing their actions as opposed to realizing that it's what's behind it. Like you, you, when you can't give what you don't have, you have to first seek to get the thing that you don't have. So if you go go yeah. buy the flowers to get laid, that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> probably not the... <laughs> Short term, maybe. Long term, sure. probably won't work. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's the thing is most, most women would see through it, right? Because they would say, this person's trying to get something. They're missing something. They're trying to get the... Oh, well, because then it comes to deeper the question, why are you trying to get laid? Because you're trying to get the validation. That's what I'm saying. You're right. Conti it's contingent. Yeah. Here are the exactly. flowers. Yeah. But... They're really beautiful. I right. got them just for you. Right. But there's a contingency. Do we want to talk about that up front before <laughs> right. I give you the flowers? Exactly. Because I'd rather hold them for the next date. Right. <laughs> We're not going there. Right. But, I, <laughs> but I think when you become a person who has a thing, who doesn't need the external validation. No, the flowers then, are an expression of the beauty become, that they feel right. in their heart. Right. And that reminds me of the beauty I see in you when my heart looks at you. Yeah. That's a little Pollyannish, but... It doesn't preclude you from, you know, I think, I think men, I don't know. I know this is a pl tough place to go. I, I certainly know it from my own experience. But I think men think they lose, uh -huh. they lose some edge. Right. 
in that, especially in the sexual potential realm, sure. If if they um, do something uh -huh. with a certain kind of sincerity, right? That the sincerity negates <laughs> the potential of having some raw, crazy, fun sexual experience. For example, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that men have to lose lose the that part of the contingency too where yeah. they have this really crazy expectation and I, you know i think it's not easy to be uh relationships are very difficult yeah for sure they're not easy no. and they're they're, they're high management yeah. situations right. i mean it's really management oriented and it takes for it to work takes each individual to be able to uncover, enliven, and expand a value of inner peace within themselves mm -hmm, mm -hmm, in yeah. order for the relationship to grow along a corridor of, I would say, not permanency, but along a corridor of harmony. Yeah. yeah where you can harmonize differences. When you've done it within yourself, then you can harmonize them outside much more easily. Right, I agree, yeah. Which is the key. Yeah. And it's the key to, you know, in the relative existence, all these differences are always playing against each other. Yeah. And so when you can harmonize differences, then the existence becomes much more glorified. It's not so, uh, I would say, what's that word? It's not so overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking about that this morning. I was like, why is it, you know, if just a conceptual level, why is it so difficult for a relationship? Like, why is it so difficult to just be two people who are existing together? You know what I mean? But, and then as I thought about it, I thought it's, well, it's because you're protecting yourself. You're trying to look for your own protection, your needs, and you're constantly in the monitoring. Are, are, am I being valued? Am I being, you know, and, and, you know, and constantly when you're in that mode, you're, you're going to constantly find ways that that's not the case. And then that threatens you, and so now yeah. you have to. Resolve. And that's what creates the whole issue. And so you let go of those things, and you don't have the that issue. Or, yeah. or even you let go of those things yourself, but then you understand that that is the thing that's happening in the other person, and then you understand how to relieve those things in the other person because you get them yourself. So, but and that and that rendition is an intellectual one. Yeah. But but there's a point in time where you can be beyond that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And everything's flowing spontaneously. Whether you stay together or not, it's not the point. Right, okay. It's the spontaneity yeah. of the moment. Yeah. Again, it's almost like doing. Do yeah. we do the relationship? Right. And if you're doing yourself, only the doing for an outcome, Right. then you're not there. Yeah. You're not there in the moment. It doesn't mean you don't deal with practical stuff. You're just free from the attachment having it all work out perfectly all the time. Right, right. So I think relationships are a difficult proposition. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but it's right. something that's got some glory in it, yeah. you know. But I think it's a good, you know, the, I think the tool, it's a, it's a, you know, I always are, we were talking about this on the podcast, my wife, just, just this last week, is it's like, you think you got it all figured out. You got, I'm like, I worked on myself. I got all, you know, I'm not, you know, until you get into a relationship with someone and then it becomes a mirror to expose the things that you still need to work on, which is a good thing because you, you realize that you, you, you just, you're never going to have it all figured out. And, and there's some, it gives you an opportunity to grow. Right. And, and I think that's, the, but, the big value. It, yeah, there is trouble. there is a value, but uh, there is a great value to that and that kind of recognition is kind of the road less traveled approach. Yeah. You ever read that book? Uh -uh. It was probably one of the very first very effective uh -huh. relationship books written probably in the 80s. Oh, okay. I'll Check it out, The yeah. Road Less Traveled. It was the bestseller. Oh, okay. I think you would like that. It would be very, I think it'd be valuable for the way you guys are operating actually. Oh, okay. It's yeah. just a suggestion. Yeah, I'll make it. Because there's a lot of or women are from oh, Venus yeah, the, and men yeah. are from Mars yeah. by Johnny Gray. But, yeah. but that's that's another kind of 
popular book describing the differences. Yeah. But A Road Less Traveled is really quite nice. Okay, yeah, I'll have to think about it. But I think that, you know, when you look at relationships, they're only going to be as valuable as the individuals making contributions to it. Yeah. So, and that, the, the only way individuals make full contributions is that they have to do something on themselves beyond intellect and ego. Right, right. So trying yeah. to read, even though I'm referencing read this book, right. reading it's the still, book does not make the change. It right. creates the inspiration. Sure. But the change that we need as human beings is the one that is inside out. Right. That's the sit down and shut up world I'm in. And right. it's hard for me to relinquish that. Right. Because right. I've been, Cause, yeah. I've been through, Yeah. you know, it's, I've, yeah. I've, you know, I got a, on a simple road early and I stayed on it. Yeah. But that's a change in nature too, right? Because it's like, because then those things are flowing from that. It's a change from human nature to yeah. divine nature. Right. I use the word divine, yeah. not to be mixed up with any of the... The religious, yeah. Yeah, I, I stay away. Religion means buying back to the source. Right. Which is what I'm talking about. But of course that word's a noun. Right. It's not a verb. <laughs> right. Religion's yeah. a noun. It means, uh, it means established in divine, then take action. Yeah. And so what happens is the human nature becomes a reflection of the divine nature. Right. Now, when it's put into the story and it becomes a religion, that's lost. Sure. I'm yeah. talking about sitting down, uncovering. It's already there. Right. It, intellectually, when we talk about it, we're trying to make an approach to it. Yeah. We're trying to romance it a little bit. Right. Because we're, but the intellect is still pretty hardwired to at some point be pretty tricky. Right. <laughs> about being right. <laughs> right, right. It wants to be right. Exactly, yeah, right. <laughs> and at some point it's in existence, the fear of existence itself right. is gonna find the line of demarcation and say, I am right. <laughs> right. And go, no, God damn it, you gotta, <laughs> fuck, no, shit, you just fucked it up. Yeah. <laughs> You're on your way. <laughs> but right. you, one has to go past that. This is why all these techniques have been around for thousands right. of years of having people contact this underlying way beyond the intellect, which seems frightening for a lot of people. Well, what yeah. am I gonna do if I'm not using the intellect? I didn't say you're not using it. Right. I'm saying, who's the governor of it? Right. Your individual self or the universal self? Right, it's almost like the intellect is, is tied to the belief, whereas the you know, beyond the belief is the totally the knowledge, right? Totally. It's like the intuition is tied to the knowledge versus yep. the intellect. The intuition is not the, the intellect, right. the, it's not part of the intellect. Right. It's yeah. a field of knowing without the, the individual intellect making the discrimination. Right. Because right. the intellect is a, an organ of discrimination. Right. You know? Yeah. It's a, sort of like what, uh, the intellect is what creates all, all the problem in driving somewhere and thinking right. you know where you're going. Right. And your partner says, the map is right here. The, the GPS <laughs> said this, I know I've done this before. You know, that, kind of, that, that typical yeah. one that can break a whole relationship. <laughs> yeah. Arrogant son of a bitch. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> they make commercials out of that yeah, now where exactly. people are constantly yeah. freaked out about the intellect or the ego being the, yeah. the dominant feature. Yeah, so I think yeah. it's a matter of... Um, People need to uncover this other aspect for me. Yeah. And Seneca is saying that. Yeah. I clearly I so. understand no, he's yeah. retire. Yeah. Retire sure means that. go, he's basically yeah. saying get away from the aspect yeah. of the limited aspect of the apparatus, the mind, the body, the senses, the ego, the yeah. feelings, and the intellect, and retire from that. Leave that alone. Right. Go to this other place. Right. And then come back. Right. And then that governor over time, Begin instead of organizing yourself to control, you yeah. become governed by an aspect of yourself that spontaneously keeps you within in a certain realm of joy, almost yeah. where you don't tip into these more, I'd say, entrenched positions, even violent—not physical violent, but emotionally violent places like jealousy or envy. Right. That's a relatively violent energy. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's yeah. not the energy of physical no, violence, right. yeah. but it's, it's violent yeah. in the sense that it's, I mean, you really have to have it. 
Right. If you, yeah, you, yeah. you can't go, well, I don't need just so. envy right now. No, fuck, you right. got to have it. You deserve it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get righteous on that one. Yeah. You know, let's kick some ass with some envy right now. Yeah. You know, and that can preoccupy you a person for a lifetime. Yeah. Let alone, you know, yeah, obviously hours or days or weeks. Yeah. And it can become a, a function. So, um, yeah, great. This is great. Yeah. I, I, someday I'd like to meet your wife. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think. And okay. we should have, we'll get together and have a coffee again. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 yeah that yeah. would be great. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll watch your uh, podcast. Or okay. Yeah. I definitely would like to yeah. hear your take on that. Yeah. I would uh, like to see it. Yeah. So um, it's been a joy to talk with you. Yeah. Likewise. I'm blessed to have you chit chat with me today. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I would say, kind. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it felt kind. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was a good <laughs> yeah. conversation. Yeah, yeah. So off we go into our day, you know, and we'll try to control the hell out of it. <laughs> despite despite the, the belief will come into yeah what is that red light it's fucking how long is that damn light exactly yeah yeah yeah, but, yeah it's hard to relax into the knowing the belief comes in well the belief takes high, over that's right, what i'm saying exactly. but when yeah. the knowing starts to govern and you need to get free from those, yeah. those aspects yeah. the sense of humor is gets really enlivened yeah when, when this enlightenment aspect, you get the childlike nature and humor is hysterical. Yeah. So you can have the thought, how long is that freaking red light really? Right. And within a second or two, you start laughing. You go, yeah. I can see red. Yeah. What a blessing. And yeah. it's different than green. Yeah. Holy shit, this is like a miracle. <laughs> yeah. I see colors. And so that starts to happen. Yeah. And everything becomes a lot more joyful. Yeah. Good. Thanks a lot. Yeah. And sending you love and blessings for the rest of your day. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.